What's up, CL family? Welcome to your CL moment today. Today, I want to be talking to you about where's the love. You know, in light of the recent tragedies that have happened in our nation surrounding Ahmed Arbery and George Floyd, I believe as a church, we're not called to sweep these issues underneath the rug. We're not called to ignore these situations. Is that we're called to face them and we're called to acknowledge them. And we're called to figure out how Jesus is calling us to respond in the middle of these very tense situations. You know, at the start of Covenant Love Church, at at the inception of it, Pastor Dad and Mama Tabor, they prayed a powerful prayer. And they said, God, give us a church that looks like heaven. You know, a church where all races feel loved, a church where all races feel welcomed, um, a church where all races treat each other equally the same, no matter the color of your skin. Man, what an amazing, what a powerful prayer. And we see the fruit of it today. You know, the Bible says that when we that when we get to heaven, that every tribe, that every tongue, and then every nation will be there. And there's going to be perfect unity. Meaning this is that in heaven, there's going to be no hatred. In heaven, there's going to be no prejudice. In heaven, there's going to be no bias based on the color of your skin. And so I want to challenge us today um, to adopt that same prayer in our lives. But in saying, instead of saying, God, give us a church that looks like heaven, um, because we are the church, and, and, and begin praying, God, give us lives that look like heaven. You know, give us lives that look like heaven. You know, pastor, he always says this. He says that the only thing that should be separated by color is laundry, not people. Now, the Bible says this in 1 John chapter 2, starting in verse 7, then moving on to verse 9. It says, Dear friends, I am not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one that you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment to love one another you have heard the message, or the message you heard before. If anyone claims I'm living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. As a church, how are we called to respond? As believers, how are we called to respond? We're called to respond with radical love. It's so easy in situations um, where the tensions are high to feel hate with hate. But we're called to contradict hate with radical love. You know the word hate here, it actually just means to love less. It's not this vehement, um, vehement, angry hatred. It just means to treat someone less than. So are we, I, I have a challenge for you today, a question for you to ask yourself, and it's not an easy question, it's an uncomfortable one, but are you treating people differently? Are you treating people less than? Are you loving less the people around you because of the color of their skin? Meaning this, friend, is that are you treating them differently because of the color of their skin? Do you have biases and prejudices towards a person because of the color of their skin? And, and, and are you fighting for the voice of justice to be heard like the person who was mistreated or even murdered is the color of your skin or is your race? The answer for this hour is first to so radical love. So real quickly, I wanna give you three practical points that we can apply to be the radical love in order to bring deep healing in this nation. The first one is this, is that we have to cleanse our hearts. We have to search our hearts and ask God to search us and say, Jesus, like, is there any bias? Is there any prejudice in me at all? Because listen, this is a heart problem. And in order for us to see national transformation, it starts with you and it starts with me. We, we cannot expect the nation to change if we're not changed. The second one is this, is that we, we need to invest our time. We need to invest ourselves. Is that, listen, the greatest gifts that we can give anybody is ourselves. I mean, to give them relationship, to give them our ear. You know, the Bible says this. It says, be slow to speak and quick to hear. So I encourage you to build relationships with people that do not look like you, to have friendships with people that do not look like you. And lastly, is that we are called to use our voice. Listen, the church is supposed to be the moral conscience of the nation. So I believe that we're called to use our voice, to use our position, to use our platform, and to use our influence to fight against injustices and and to fight against unrighteousness because injustice is unrighteousness. So friend, I just want to encourage you with these three simple points. So this was your CL moment today. Thank you for joining us.